Welcome back, everybody. My name is Nicholas Bogroff Gantel, and I am creatively bankrupt. So today, we are diving into Season 2, Episode 5 of Fleabag. Quick note before we get started, uh, you may have noticed, no glasses today. Yeah, the uh, short version is my glasses broke, I super glued them back together, it worked for a little while, and then it didn't anymore. So uh, I ordered new glasses, and I'll get them in like a week or two. Uh, so I'm not sure when they're going to be in here exactly, but for at least the next couple episodes... You're getting glasses -less. Don't worry, I can still see my computer, so it's not like I'm, you know, flying blind here. I actually can see what's going on. It just means if I stare at the screen too long, I'll get a huge fucking headache. Also, I can't see depth perception, but I don't think that's going to be an issue because, you know, they're not 3D. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what's going on up here. In other news, there is one thing I wanted to... To, well, there's one thing I want to say about last episode. It would be inaccurate to say I wanted to say it. I tried very hard to say everything I wanted to say last episode. You may remember. Um, but in editing the episode, I noticed something that I hadn't noticed when watching it. And I might just be reading this into it. But uh, the confession scene... Where she's saying, I want someone to tell me what to do and what to believe. And the, the way she's talking about just the role she wants filled in her life. That really reminded me of the uh, confession that the loan officer guy had in season one, episode four. When they're at the retreat. And he says, they keep asking me what I want to get out of this. I'm not going to tell them what I want. And then he tells her, you know, this kind of list of things. And he's like, I want to, you know, go home. I want to move on. Um, and it wasn't identical. But, but, but I remember really trying to dissect what the substance of what he was saying was. And I had a lot of difficulty with it. And I realized he was really coming from this emotional place of... Well, the way I interpreted it, it sounded like he wanted to fit into this mold of what he was supposed to be and be better at being this ideal, like this abstract idea in his head of what his life was supposed to be and what he was supposed to be. Now, I might be reading that into it. It's, it's not exactly what he said, and it's not exactly what she said. But just something about their tones when giving these confessions in episode four. Because, it's again, it's an episode four confession. I don't know. That It just seemed really similar to me, uh, tonally. So, it might be nothing, but I, I thought that was cool. So, I wanted to share that. Apart from that, I, uh, I don't have a lot to say, honestly. I'm going to try not to make any predictions for this episode because I've been really bad at it this season. But also because the last two episodes I predicted she would have drinks with the lawyer, the uh, the rapist lawyer who was going to defend her against Martin. Don't know why I said that with an accent. Yes, I do. It's because Martin is a great name to say with an accent, but I have a terrible accent. So sorry, any British people I may have offended. Um, yeah, I, d I don't do good accents at all. Point is... Martin might be suing her, and she got the, the rapist lawyer guy, the guy who def defends rapists, to, uh, to defend her. But on the condition that she go out to drinks with him, and I kept predicting it was going to happen, and it kept not happening. But then I saw the thumbnail for this episode, and I might have misseen it, because the character was on the edge of the frame, and I think their back was kind of turned to us. But it looked like she was out to drinks with the guy, which is really fucked up because this was the episode I was gonna pre I was gonna stop predicting that they go out to drinks. I was gonna be like, I'm not predicting that because I predicted that the last two times and I was fucking wrong. I don't think we're ever gonna see him again. And now I'm in this huge dilemma where it's like, on the one hand, I feel like I know that's gonna happen this episode. On the other hand, what if it's just some random black guy who was on the edge of the frame and I, I missed 
took him because I had already primed my mind to think about she's gonna go to drinks with this lawyer, she's gonna go to drinks with this lawyer, then I'll really look like an idiot if I'm like, so I already know that's happening this episode. You all already know the answer, presumably, so... Fuck it. Here... Here's hoping I'm not wrong. It looks like she's gonna get drinks with the lawyer. That's not a prediction, that's just an interpretation of the image I saw. If I'm wrong, I'm really sorry. <laughs> the, uh... The other prediction I'm making, it's not about this episode so much. In a, in an in inverse way, it's about this episode. I predict that episode six, the series finale, is gonna have the wedding between uh, her dad and the godmother character who I was convinced was already her stepmother through all of season one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically the only reason that's a prediction about this episode is I'm predicting it won't happen this episode. So if it happens this episode, I will be truly embarrassed. Um, that's pretty much it. I think I'm ready to just jump in. I'm excited and terrified, as I always am for this show. But the closer we get to the end, the more it's like... Oh my god, heart pounding. What what's going to happen? So uh Yeah, let's get started. Oh, and as always, if you're watching my videos without watching the original content first, you're doing the content a disservice and you're doing yourself a disservice. If you really do want your first experience of Fleabag to involve me, then head over to my Patreon. For just $1, you can get access to my uncut reactions that you can play alongside the original content. Let's dive in. Oh god, please don't break my heart. <laughs> it is him! I wasn't an idiot! He's a little bit controlling. Don't either. But it's manageable. I'm going to. Okay. He's a feminist. I have a sister. <laughs> you want to go and have sex? That's better. I'm really good at it. He won't be. I'm really good at it. He won't be. He's really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. Oh, they did not leave on the best I'm terms. I'm gonna be sick. I'm gonna be sick. You're gonna puke right on her flowers. Hi. Hi. Do you need a hand with any of No, no. Well, I can at no. least take the bassoon. I... Don't tell me this is the fucking wedding and I fucked it up again! God damn it, I swear to God if this is the fucking wedding. She better be quick today. I've got a serious appointment later, I can't miss it. The, it's the portrait, they're doing appointment. the portrait. A serious one. You can just leave these things there for now, yeah. You like a quick cup of tea before oh, you start? Oh, yeah. There's so many in the pot. Come through. Come through. This is a great Lovely shot. Sweet. Hello. <laughs> oh, hey. I'm going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Good payoff. I'm afraid I won't be able to officiate at the ceremony tomorrow. <laughs> oh, that look of horror. My brother is ill. Was he the pedophile? Or what? the drunk? What's he ill with? Ah, uh, Larry. He had weird family members. Accident. Right. <laughs> oh, God. Well. Oh, this is going to be spectacular. <laughs> you. Poor man. Oh. I think we might have to... Don't even think about it. This is much more important. You must go. Go, go, go. Okay, well, well th thank you so much for your understanding. Well, sure, sure, sure. Uh, all the best, and uh, we'll see you again. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, goodbye, have a great darling. day. Good bye. bye. Bye, bye, bye. Wait, did she actually stop the wedding? What a cunt! What a cunt! No, 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 please, don't, fucking don't fucking don't 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 I think he can still hear you. Right now. Send them away! Damn, girl. You're in rough shape. Oh, hey. Oh, my God! Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Jesus, how are we there? Literally, literally three seconds. <laughs> you can't just cancel a wedding. I don't have a choice. But you have the dress. <laughs> They're so cute. Please don't come to the church again. Oh, shit. I mean that. Oh, shit. With the greatest compliments. She got kicked out of church! By the cool priest! Okay. Did Whoa! I was just talking about you! Hi. But I just wanted to say goodbye. And to give you this. Thanks. 
It's a guinea pig. It's a hamster. <laughs> That's even funnier. So it's my sister. She's a bit mental. Do you mind if I? Sure. I wasn't going to stay. So. Claire. Something's happened. Something awful has happened. I can't. But where are you? Do you mean to come? What? Cafe, but I can just tell me where you are. I, I can look after the place if you like. Really? Could you give Hillary and um? Stephanie. Stephanie, some cucumber at two thirty. Stephanie. Thanks. Who's Stephanie? Claire, what the hell has happened? Come, I need you to... Oh my God! Did you go to Anthony? You remember what happened to me? I honestly thought it was the last time I was going to see him. Um, I mean, that's awful, but if I... His little face was just... Anthony! Jesus Christ. Is this what you Christ. asked? No, of course not. No! Don't blame me for your bad choices. Hair isn't everything. Wow. Hair is everything. We wish it wasn't, so we could actually think about something else occasionally, but it is. Some people are exploited for it, and it pays your fucking bills. Hair is everything, Anthony. Show her the reference. Is it going to look exactly like that? Oh my god. Thank you for being there. It was cathartic. At the hospital. No, it's okay. <laughs> I just felt relief. I didn't want my husband's baby. Yeah, but we've met your husband. And that's like reasonable. What's going on with you? Um I nearly fucked a priest. I met someone. What does he do? He's a priest. It's making your life choice look a little better by comparison, right? Is it? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. You are joking. No. <laughs> oh good, she sees the humor in it. I was worried she wouldn't. I know. Glad? Is oh my god. Oh god. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Claire! Claire! Hi. Oh my god, Claire, I love your hair! Oh, he's a keeper. Claire, it's so cute and edgy. These penguins are taking me to this new, amazing London music thing. Are you free? Oh. Yes. You want to come? Oh, I, yes. I have to take my steps on his bassoon. I mean. Come on, step up. I'll Offer take the bassoon. Yes. I've got it. Yes. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, um. Bye, Claire. Bye, Claire. Okay. Bye, Claire. <laughs> I can't believe Claire it. might resent this, but she's, you know, Claire, so and this is outside of her comfort cute. zone. It's all the things. Really? But that's she's soft. genuinely <laughs> trying to help her out. Go so well with your top. Thank God, that's so sweet of you. Honestly, I've had such a day with it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Aww. Oh, you have a visitor. He said he knew you, so I let him wait in there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Fine. You're gonna keep that apron? He took the penny. <laughs> Souvenir. Oh. Hey! He's gonna make a bassoon joke. Is that a bassoon in your hand or are you just pleased to see me? Please don't hurt the guinea pig. I would never hurt the guinea pig. Yeah, but you're insane. I so I feel like you might. Here we go, sweetie. I can't even get the woman pregnant. And then you come in showing off about your miscarriage like you didn't even want the one you had. I was just trying to make her feel better. Oh, shit. It's a hell of a way to look at it. I mean, it's bullshit, but that's a hell of a way to phone. look at it. Give me your phone. Is she leaving me? God, I, I hope so. Have. Yes! Don't let her leave me. Fuck off. Don't let her leave me, please. Fuck off. <laughs> I hope she doesn't come home tonight. Oh, yes. Twist the knife. Ah, catch oh. me, catch me, catch me. Jesus Christ. I will take you down, fucker. I will take you down, fucker. Fuck you! Fuck you! Yes! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! You better start sleeping with a lawyer. Why are you sleeping with a lawyer? Yeah, oh. Lucky lawyer! That was intense. I'm really glad she stood her ground. 
You know that feeling when the hot misogynist who might not be a misogynist is turning up at your house for the second time in 48 hours to give you nine orgasms you don't want, just to do something to get your head out of the fact that the only person you want to see in the world is the priest that you... We're coming full circle. Oh. Hey. What? Wait, what? Your sister gave me your address. Are you on your way out? Oh, no, I just, I just got in. I've only got underwear under this coat. <laughs> oh, but he didn't look at us when she spoke to us. Hmm. Or is that only when he's, like, drunk? I've given a lot of things up. Um, so, uh... Oh, shit, this is gonna be weird. If, if, if there's someone you need to see or, or let in or... No, honestly, honestly, it's fine. Is she just gonna leave him out there? When I was a child, I... I'm just... I'll just be, um... How are you gonna play this? My priest is here, and he really needs some guidance. What? <laughs> is he okay? You're the best sex I've ever had. Really? You made me come nine times. <laughs> now go away. Yeah. <laughs> I could take this somewhere else. Oh, okay, good. Good for <laughs> Yeah, shop it around. Nine times. You're a saint. Direct? I like it. I can't have sex with you because I'll fall in love with you. Oh. And if I fall in love with you, I won't burst into flames, but my life will be fucked. We're gonna have sex. I'm supposed to love one thing. Oh my god, we're gonna have sex. For fuck's sake! Stop that! He's he noticed again. We're gonna have sex, aren't we? That was a great ending. Oh my god. This fucking episode. Okay, so it was shorter than some of the other episodes. I think it was only like 22 or 23 minutes. But, holy hell. It was so good. It... I feel weird saying that because it wasn't like, normally when I watch an episode and say this episode was so good, it's because it's a cohesive whole. It's like the whole thing takes place at an event or the whole thing centers around one idea. But this was like, this almost felt like a filler episode. Like it felt like this was just bridging the gap between where we were in episode four and where we need to be when we set up, you know, the series finale. But... Everything in it was so good. The scene, oh my god, Claire's haircut. First of all, that hard cut to her with the, no pun intended, that hard cut to her with the hairdo. Jesus Christ, that was hilarious. And the whole speech about hair is everything. So, I relate to that not on a dealing with my own hair level, because even at my most meticulous, dealing with my hair is not that complicated. But on a, I tend to recognize people by their hair, which is unfortunate when people change their hair. So hair has always been very important to me in terms of, like, style, attractiveness, that kind of thing. Um, whenever, you know, when I was younger, whenever guys would be like, oh, she's cute, is she cute, what do you think of her? The first thing I looked at was, like, hair. So this idea that, you know, hair is everything, makes the difference between a good day and a bad day, like... I get that. I also get that because I've had, I mean, hell, on this show, I've had fucked up hair days. And when I watch the footage, I'm like, oh my god, what am, what was I doing with my life that I let myself go on camera like that? So, so yeah, I love that whole monologue. Um, and I love the fact that he nailed the hairdo. And she was the one who had 
the bad idea. That was fantastic. Um, I love that Claire is out on the town with Claire. I thought we were going to see the stepson again. I thought we were going to get another creepy scene with the stepson. Um, we didn't, obviously. But we got a scene with Martin, and holy hell, what a scene it was. Um, he's been pretty much absent this season. Obviously, he was in the uh, season premiere, and we he got a brief bit in episode two. But... Episodes 3 and 4 he wasn't in, and again, his bit in episode 2 was, like, sort of a drive-by. Uh, the episode didn't center around him, really. I don't know, and maybe he, maybe he's in it about as much as he was in season 1, I just felt his presence more in season 1, I think. All that to say, I pretty much just loved every single scene in this episode. Um... Thank fuck the wedding day. I thought the wedding was going to happen this episode and every prediction of mine would be wrong. Because my honest prediction would have been the fact that she didn't, you know, have drinks with the lawyer. Because I kept predicting that. But then she did have drinks with the lawyer. Now I sort of <laughs> predicted that because I saw it in the thumbnail. But even that I wasn't like able to 100% commit to. So... All that to say, I'm glad I at least got one thing right, that the wedding didn't happen this episode, and it sounds like it's going to happen next episode. Um, I mean, it might just be, like, the first five minutes, like, the cold open might be at the wedding, for all I know. But, uh... Jesus, the series finale next week. That's... I don't know how to wrap my head around that. So, it took me a long time to launch this channel. Um... Like, a... a a weirdly long amount of time. So the first batch of episodes that I released, I had filmed over the course of like months and months because I was still trying to figure out the format, the the equipment, the setup. And uh, so I feel like I've been watching Fleabag for forever. And the fact that it might be over soon, I mean, not might be, the fact that it will be over soon is like... I don't know what to make of that. It, um... Of the shows I've been watching, this one's my favorite so far. I, uh... Don't get me wrong, I loved Clone High. Don't get me wrong, I'm loving Avatar. And Good Omens was delightful. But holy shit, Fleabag has been perfect start to finish. And if they can just land land it next to just stick that landing then it's gonna be one of my favorite shows I mean it's already one of my favorite shows of all time but I think I can count on one hand the number of series finales where I was like that was a good series finale that was stellar and it's it's like Bojack Horseman The Wire Community that might be it honestly um like, there are ones where I went, well, given what you had, it was, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, like, as far as series finales that were just good with no caveats, there are they are few and far between. But if any show can pull it off, it's this fucking show. Because literally every episode has been stellar. If, if I had to pick a least favorite episode... Like, what's the dud amongst the group? God, that's hard. They're all so fucking good. It, it would probably be season two, episode two. Just because when I got to the end of that episode, I was kind of like, huh, I don't know what to make of that. And every other episode, I feel like I knew what to make of it. But there was so much good shit in season two, episode two, that it's like, I can't, I can't say it was a bad episode. It wasn't. It was phenomenal. It was just... Not it, it didn't instinctively pull together upon first viewing the way all the other episodes... The fact that every episode, when I get to the end, I think that is the way to end that episode. That is hard to do. Like, there are some great endings to episodes of TV show that the first time through I was like, mm, not loving that. And it took a couple watchings before I was like, oh, 
no, I get it now. That is a good ending. It's actually a great ending. It was just subtle, and I, I missed whatever. So, I don't know. The fact that upon first viewing, every episode except one has been like a knockout punch, and even that one was filled with great content. This This is one of the best shows ever made. Like, as far as... Okay, I use the word dramatic a little loosely, but dramatic or dramedy type shows. BoJack Horseman, I think, is one of the best TV shows ever made. The Wire is probably the actual best TV show ever made. But, like, this one, this is, like, up there. Because even BoJack Horseman and The Wire have, like, episodes or seasons where I'm like, okay, I didn't love that one as much. But, fuck, this show is so goddamn good. Which, I mean, you guys you guys already know that. I mean, why would you be here if you didn't love this show? I'm not ready for it to end, though. Like, I have nothing substantive to say. That, I mean, sure, I could recap the episode. I could talk about uh, how funny it was when she called the priest a cunt right after he left the door. And you could hear her from three blocks away. I could speculate about... What's going to happen with, you know, she's talking to the audience, breaking the fourth wall, and we've drawn attention to it in episodes two, three, four, and five now, so there's no way that's not going to be a big thing next episode. But at the end of the day, all I keep thinking is, I am not ready for this show to end, but I also can't wait to watch the next episode, and that's very conflicting. I think I'm going to cut it off there, because otherwise I'm just going to keep gushing about this show for another 20 minutes. Um, so uh, check out my Patreon if you want early episodes or uncut episodes. And as always, please like and subscribe, because I'd love to have you all coming back on the regular.